Wendy Young, and I serve as the Senior Associate Director of Admissions for Recruitment and Communications. And I'm joined by my colleagues from the Honors Program this evening. Super excited to talk about the Honors application. Got um, the option for you to ask questions in the chat below. For those of you who are joining us via Facebook or YouTube, we are not able to monitor those questions right now, but you are always welcome to reach out to us directly um, in the admissions office, and we'll do the best to answer those questions that you have. So before I kick it off and turn it over to my colleagues, we want to get a sense of who is with us. So I'm going to um, send you all a survey. If you would, just uh, fill that out and let us know so we know what year in school you are, um, and where you are joining us from. So, oh, and last thing before I forget, this session is recorded, so uh, if you need to step out early or you wanna come back and review the content, you can do that on this website. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brooke to introduce herself. Hi, everybody, welcome. Um, I'm very excited to be here. I'm Brooke Kelly. I am the Associate Director of Academic Services in the Honors Program at the University of Washington. This is my first time using this platform, so if there are any technological hiccups, we can attribute it to me and this being my first time. But um, we're excited to, to be here with UW Admissions and um, speak to you and let you know a little bit more about the Honors Program. Uh, we have a presentation we're going to walk through, um, and you'll, I'll ask my colleagues from Honors um, to introduce themselves in, in that presentation, but we'll have plenty of times for um, questions at the end. Um, you know, uh, obviously, Jocelyn will be monitoring um, the chat as we go along, but we'll try to save big questions um, for for that end time so we can get through our presentation. Uh, and just like this session is being recorded, a lot of the information we'll be talking about today is also available on the Honors Program website. You'll hear me um, refer to certain parts of our website and direct you there because there are lots of good resources um, that uh, after today, we would recommend that you spend a little time exploring um, to learn a little bit more. Um, so with that, I just want to start um, with the Honors Program's mission statement. Uh, our mission is, as a program is to engage a diverse population of students through rigorous interdisciplinary curriculum that promotes expansive, innovative thinking and conscious global citizenship. We ask students to take intellectual risks, to seek an understanding of the interdependence of all branches of knowledge, to engage with the complexities of difference and diversity, to take leadership roles in navigating global change and to value a life of continuous learning and personal growth. I like to start here because our values and mission are what inform and drive our curriculum, our requirements, as well as our advising conversations with students. So if you look at this mission and as you learn more today, if you see your own values and interests reflected in the curriculum that we um, provide for students and the mission and values we have here, um, that might be a really encouraging sign that this program could be a good fit for you. So um, next, I'd like to ask my, uh, my honors program colleagues to introduce themselves. Uh, Juliana, would you like to introduce yourself next? You're muted, Juliana. I still haven't learned. OK, unmute. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to see so many people here and interested in the honors program. Um, my name is Juliana Villegas. I am the associate director of the honors program and also affiliate assistant professor in the English department. And um, I do a lot of the curriculum work and international programming for honors. Um, and I work with colleagues uh, across campus. Good to, good to have you here. Julie, would you like to introduce yourself now? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Julie. I'm a third year student um, in the honors program. Um, I'm currently an environmental studies major in the program in the environment. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your questions and give you a little bit more information about what the honors program is and how it benefits you as a student um, and what I'm involved in through the honors program. Great, thank you. Um, and just to add a little bit more to my introduction, um, as I said, I'm um, Associate Director of Academic Services. I do advising, um, I lead our admissions work, and I run um, an international travel fellowship for the Honors Program called the Bonderman Fellowship, which I'm happy to tell you more about in the Q&A. Um, I've been at UW for, um, I'm going into my 
16th year, I think, as a staff member, and I did my undergraduate degree here many moons ago, so it was a slightly different um, experience than what, what you will have as an incoming student, but um, I'm a big fan of the UW, and I think all of us here are for many, many reasons, so we're excited to, to talk about it today. Um, so I want to talk next um, about the paths to honors. Um, at UW, you can pursue honors in a couple of different ways, uh, as a general education track through interdisciplinary honors or as an in-depth program within your major, which is what we call departmental honors. Um, if you do both of these, you'll get a degree uh, called college honors, which is a, a combination of these two. And um, these three paths exist to give you as students flexibility to match honors to the other goals that you have at UW. We know that you'll all be doing many, many different things and have many interests. And so um, you can learn more about each of these paths and really think about which one might fit best with the other things that you're hoping to do here. Um, because interdisciplinary honors is a general education track, students participate in it throughout most of their undergraduate experience. They apply as entering freshmen, um, as transfer students, or after completing two quarters at UW um, ver, ver, uh, through a process we call second year admission. Um, Departmental honors is major specific, so we can certainly tell you a little bit about that today, but um, it, we will often say, well, every major is different, so departmental honors is different in every single major. Um, Generally, it, it works to deepen a student's understanding and experience in their particular chosen discipline and, and major. Uh, you enroll in departmental honors after declaring a major, um, and uh, all of departmental honors tend to require some additional coursework, uh, often concluding in a thesis or a capstone project. Sometimes I describe it uh, like a mini graduate school experience, although it does vary significantly across the different majors. Um, you can always look at a, at a particular major's website for more information about their departmental honors program. Uh, and you know we can also talk about that, but generally it's not something you need to worry about now as an incoming student to the UW. Uh, it's something that you would think about once you were in your major um, and consider then. Um, we uh, also want to emphasize that should you choose one of these paths, it does not influence the chance of admission into the other. So if you apply for and participate in interdisciplinary honors um, and want to do departmental honors later, those are separate admissions processes. Um, so if you were to apply and not get into interdisciplinary honors, you could definitely go on to do departmental honors. Um, they are separate, uh, separate tracks. So what will you do as a part of the honors program at UW? Um, I'm gonna spend the rest of the time uh, today talking about interdisciplinary honors. Um, uh, so we're gonna focus on that from here on out and really dig into uh, what you would do and have access to in the honors program and, and the interdisciplinary honors track. So. Interdisciplinary honors is made up of sort of three components. There's um, honors coursework, experiential learning, and reflection via an online portfolio. Um, this presentation today, we want to give you an understanding of what honors is like and answer your questions, but we don't expect you to memorize everything about the program. Again, I'll refer you to our website for more details um, uh, about a lot of these things, but I also want to tell you that uh, all of our incoming students do take an introductory course called uh, honors 100 and that's a space where we um, go over all the requirements and the resources of honors and the UW. Uh, sometimes I think of honors 100 as uh, a class that could be called like how to be really successful at, at the university um, and so we will go over all these different things today but I want to let you know that that is something that that you would learn more about um, if you were to come into the program. So I, I think it's helpful to uh, place honors within um, within 
the larger university system. And so you may or may not be familiar with how the university uh, operates, but basically, regardless of what you want to major in, when you come to the UW, we say, we want you to take major specific coursework, but we also want you to have general education. We want you to take courses that um, are across multiple areas of, of knowledge that will build up skills that you have. Um, and so you can see in this uh, slide that I have here that it sort of breaks down what it takes to get a UW degree and it situates where honors fits into that. So you can see that there's your major, which can vary from anywhere from 50 to 100 credits. Um, and then there's that general education, which can be 50 to 90 credits. And within the general education, there's a further breakdown and, and honors sits within the general education requirements. Um, interdisciplinary honors is 45 credits, and that is designed to overlap with the UW's areas of knowledge requirements. Um, there are additional areas of knowledge requirements usually uh, that um, are not covered by interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary honors. Um, and we want um, you to know that you have flexibility to take lots of different courses here. But the honors uh, courses are designed to overlap with that general education. They're not designed to be separate from outside that, that's, that pie. Um, so you shouldn't have to stay longer to participate in honors. Um, we um, we generally plan for students to take about two uh, courses per quarter that count towards major requirements or prerequisites and one course that would count towards their general education. And that would be true for honors students as well. You would take in your first uh, three years or so, you take an average of one honors course per quarter. Um, I'll anticipate questions that we often get is, we don't mandate that you take honors courses in a particular order or on a particular schedule. We encourage you to take one per quarter, but there's lots of flexibility built into our curriculum so that you can, again, choose the, the courses and the path that is best for you. Um, so speaking of courses, I think the best thing um, to do is to dive into that. And there are some nuance here. Um, and this is one of those points in this presentation where I always direct students um, and people interested in the program to go to our website and our courses page. And there's a couple of um, aspects to that that I really encourage you to explore. Primarily, um, I really think it's important to go look at uh, the archives of our course descriptions. These are course descriptions that you'll only find on our website, and they're written by the people who are teaching the classes themselves. So they're not generic descriptions, they're in-depth descriptions written by the faculty telling you about the, the course and oftentimes including information about assignments and expectations, sometimes grading information. Um, and I think it's a really useful quick tool. You can look through several quarters of course descriptions and think, okay, I am very excited to take some of these courses. They sound amazing, they sound interesting. And that again can be a really great quick test of this program might be a good fit for me. On the other hand, if you read through several quarters of our course descriptions and you think, I don't wanna take any of these, they're not very interesting to me, then you have to ask yourself, well, why would I wanna do this program? Why would I wanna apply and, and go through the process of joining it if I'm not actually interested in the courses? So again, it can just be a quick way for you to test your own fit and interest with our program and the curriculum that we would ask you to do should you uh, apply and be admitted to honor. So um, that's the, the place I, I like to start when talking about courses. Um, but diving in uh, a little bit more, um, these questions come up a lot. So it gets a little nuanced, but I wanna try to make it clear to everybody. Um, the types of honors courses that are offered fall into sort of two rough categories. There are honors prefix courses, um, and you can see on the slide we have a couple of examples where the course title and number is actually honors and then a, a specific number. And these are courses uh, designed by faculty for us. And um, Juliana Villegas goes out and recruits amazing faculty. Students recommend them, other faculty and colleagues recommend them. And she recruits them to design these courses for us and to teach them. Um, she also brings in community scholars from um, around the greater Seattle area and sometimes around the world to teach courses and design courses for us. So 
these are unique courses that are, um, I think, sort of what people associate most with the honors program on campus, and I think what students really enjoy. They are interdisciplinary in their focus across the board. And, and what I mean by interdisciplinary is they're taking different ways of thinking and knowing and applying those different lenses to a particular subject. So we might have a faculty member from astronomy who is going to teach a class called Storytelling in the Sciences. And they're going to teach a class that brings in communication, uh, English writing, um, scientific principles and knowledge, not just astronomy perspectives, but biology, physics, and all these perspectives to teach students how to communicate and think and talk um, about science. This is a real class I'm talking about. And I, the, the standout anecdote from it is that I had a student come in and be like, we just did improv in my honor science course. He brought in an improv troupe and they taught us how to do improv to talk about complex scientific subjects, which is just, a, I think, a great little anecdote about how these courses bring in different perspectives and different ways of thinking. Um, and the reason we think that interdisciplinarity is so valuable is uh, our experiences as human beings out in the world is that um, it's very rare that one set of knowledge or one way of knowing or thinking or communicating is um, all that you need in your life. Um, you're going to interact with people and issues and problems and challenges that are complex and difficult and meaty. And having experience in a classroom full of students from all different majors um, who are um, coming from different backgrounds across the country, across the world, different majors on campus, different living situations, and talking about different ideas and different ways of knowing around a particular subject is really great practice for what you're probably gonna spend the rest of your life doing, which is talking about really challenging things with lots of different people with lots of different opinions and perspectives. So those honors prefix courses, um, are sort of a hallmark of our program, but we also have um, a, a good number of non-honors prefix courses. And these are versions of traditional UW courses that we have worked with the departments to create an honors version of. Um, so we have some like honors chemistry, um, honors physics, we have law 100, we've had an honors architecture course in the past, um, an honors history course. Um, they're courses that uh, a lot of our students might be interested in taking, uh, and but they are honors versions of traditional courses. Now, what I would say is, particularly because we have some honors versions of math science courses, I always think it's important to say, just because we offer a course with an honors version doesn't mean you have to take that. So um, it's something that where advising really comes into play and honors advisors would be working with you in course selection. But just to say, you know, we might offer honors physics. That doesn't mean you have to take honors physics. You have a lot of choice in college um, and you have a lot of choice in the honors program about what courses you take to fulfill your specific requirements. Uh, the next big question is how does honors work with AP, IB, uh, running start type courses? Um, and the thing that I want to just say here is we love seeing these. We love seeing that you've done um, hard work and challenged yourself um, with uh, these types of courses when we're looking at applications. We think they're really excellent preparation for college. Um, they don't count towards the honors requirements, so that for those 45 uh, credits of honors coursework that I, that I spoke of, um, those courses can't be substituted with a AP, IB, or Running Start type courses. Um, we uh, think they're wonderful preparation, but they're not quite the same is doing honors level work in college. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't count. So that's something I want to be very clear about. Sometimes we get people say, oh, then does that mean all of my um, AP credits are wasted? And it's like, no, no. If you bring credits into the university, they definitely can still count towards other UW requirements, of which you'll have many if you remember that pie chart. Um, so, so don't think that they're not useful or good. Um, and, and again, um, they are really helpful in um, preparing you for university in general. Um, 
And the final thing about courses I want to just mention really quickly, and we can talk about this more um, during the Q&A or, or later on in the presentation, is that we do also offer honor study abroad programs. Um, and that's another thing that Juliana um, puts a great deal of effort and creativity into, which is working with great faculty to design study abroad programs for honor students um, that allow you to earn honors credit in other parts of the world. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that that looks. Um, and they're really exciting. We have a lot of students who do them over the summer where they get sort of an intensive um, 15 honors credits um, in a short period of time over the summer. But that intensive nature is also matched by you're in Rome eating gelato while you're you know, in class and like having this really deep immersive experience um, while also having a really um, deep and meaningful education. So with that, I want to move on to experiential learning. And this is the second component of the honors curriculum. And we, um, we have made this an actual requirement for our students because we know that experiences students have outside the classroom can be just as, if not more meaningful, than your experiences inside the classroom. And, and my classic example is, you know, I have zero memory of reading a chemistry textbook in high school, but I sure remember having um, a lab, chemistry lab experience that I could not get right, and I failed, and I failed, and I failed at, and then finally making it work and having that aha moment, that realization. So um, we know that sometimes what you're doing outside the classroom can have a long lasting impact on you and it can feed back to what you are doing in the classroom. So again, you're gonna do dozens of things in your time at UW that we would call experiential learning. Um, you're going to join clubs and take on leadership roles and pay, maybe take a service learning class or get involved in a local community that you're, you want to be a part of or are, are currently a part of. You might study abroad. Um, we want you to think about these things um, as a really rich and important part of your education at the UW. Uh, and for two of them, out of all the things you're gonna do in college, we're gonna ask you to just pause and be reflective about them. Two of those experiences in university, we're gonna say, hey, why do you wanna do this? Why do you wanna do that study abroad program to uh, Berlin? Why do you wanna spend a year in that biology lab doing research on that incredibly specific cell protein? Um, what, what, do you, what are you going into it looking for? And then when you're doing that process, at the end of it, we're going to say, what was it actually like? Reflect back on what you thought it was going to be and what you told us at the beginning. And then at the end, tell us how did it change or match your expectations or what did you learn that you didn't expect? Let's do some reflection on that thing that you spent a lot of time and effort on and what did it mean to you? Um, and that reflection that we have you do in this experiential learning um, uh, requirement is matched by um, the third component of our curriculum, which is reflection via an online portfolio. Um, we really uh, know that we, we know students have um, heard a lot about reflection and oftentimes have been told again and again how important that is. We too believe that. And as someone who only journals when I travel and then I swear I'm gonna keep journaling when I come home and I never do, like I know that challenge of like seeing the value of it and having trouble following through. Um, so we're gonna ask you to keep a portfolio during your time at UW and in honors. Um, it's very simple. There's not like one right way to do it or for it to look. We teach you how to do it in Honors 100 in that first quarter. Um, we, we teach you the basics of it and we help you set it up. And then we um, have you contribute to it over your time at UW. And so you might contribute things in the moment that are like the first time you get back that glowing paper where a faculty member has been like, this is an amazing work and great ideas and all this. Or it might be the first time you get a test back that you failed, and that maybe has never happened to you before, or maybe you didn't expect it in this class. We want you to put the challenging and the positive things in that portfolio, because at the end of your time in the honors program, you're gonna go into a final one credit seminar um, with other honors stud students who are getting ready to graduate. And you're gonna take all that raw material from that experience as you were going through, through it. 
you're going to reflect on it and you're going to form that into a presentation that you're going to give to the honors community where you are going to tell the story of your time at UW. And you might reflect back on this moment in an online information session and thinking about how do I even know if I want to go to UW? And then you'll tell us all about that path that you got you through to graduation and whatever that great adventure is that you're going to do next. So we have students who go through this um, portfolio process and the presentation process come back to us and say, I was amazed. I um, was so prepared for job interviews as I was graduating from college. I was doing my graduate school or med school interviews and I had already thought through why I'd made the choices I made in college and why I was choosing this next step. So when they asked me questions, I, I had good good reasons and I had good answers because I practiced them and I'd workshopped it and I'd given this presentation to the community. Um, and so um, Juliana can speak um, more to the portfolio during, during the um, Q and A section because she actually teaches uh, our final caps uh, final course about portfolios and reflection. But um, we just see again and again students talk about how meaningful um, that reflective experience is. So, what are the benefits of honors? This is something we always want to make sure we address because um, students uh, always want to know as they're thinking about applying. Um, we just want to take a few minutes to to talk about you know some of the elements that make up. Um, our program and some of the things that we think are the best parts of the program. So um, I like to start with the academic benefits. Um, our class sizes are small. Um, there are 28 students. Um, the UW's class sizes range significantly. So you might have a three-person um, seminar in the last few years of your, uh, your history major, which I was a history major and I had a seminar my senior year with five other students. Um, and you might have a 400-person lecture, um, which I had plenty of when I was a student at UW. And so there's a real mix and a real variety. So our classes average out at about um, 28 people. Um, uh, per class, but it does vary a little bit. Um, again, we have some small seminars in, in honors. I think we have one slated to run this um, fall that has, I think, uh, eight, eight to 12 people in it. Um, honors chemistry has about 70 people in it um, at any given time, um, which is smaller than the general chemistry course um, that, that most introductory students will take. Um, but uh, that, that's just to give you a sense because people do want to know. Um, we also um, want to really, again, talk about that those interdisciplinary classes as teaching new ways of thinking and learning. Um, they're designed to push your current understanding of the world. So you'll learn to approach different, different topics through new lenses and also think about your own values and beliefs in those contexts and in that learning about new ways of thinking. Uh, our courses are designed to push students beyond their comfort zone and stretch your intellectual curiosities through discussion, reflection, reading, writing, and experiential learning. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier talking about courses, but the, the courses do change quarterly. So there's a lot of variety um, on a lot of things to choose from. Um, there's new, relevant, and exciting topics. Again, Juliana works really hard to recruit faculty and help them design exciting um, courses for our students. Um, and our faculty uh, love teaching for honors. Um, they are often looking for an opportunity to engage with a smaller group of really invested students. And um, I often hear faculty say how they really view their honors classes and their honors students as um, equal citizens of the classroom, you know, e equal participants that you have as much to bring and to the learning process that they're all, you'll all go through together. And so um, it's not uh, frequent that you would have an honors class where there's just a lot of lecturing. It's usually lecturing, discussion, small group work, independent work. Um, they're very dynamic and our faculty really love um, teaching them. And again, unique study abroad programs um, that go all over the world. 
There's also lots of support offered, um, and I would highlight our honor student leaders, of which Julie is one, and this lovely uh, page on our website where our honors uh, student leaders have volunteered to put up profiles of themselves and their contact information to be contacted by prospective students and other current students who have questions and want to reach out. Um, this is an amazing group of um, interesting, interested, dedicated, um, diverse students who are doing doing all sorts of things. Um, you can major in anything and participate in honors. So uh, you definitely will see that reflected um, across uh, the student leaders group. Um, there's also honors advisors. Um, there's four of us who do uh, advising and and we do it from orientation, which we just finished up with our incoming students, all the way through to graduation. And I, you know, I, those relationships continue. Uh, last summer, I wrote a letter of recommendation for law school for a student who graduated in 2012. And now he's at Georgetown Law, which is really exciting. So, you know, those relationships do continue. And um, we love to get to know our students at a, on a, um, a really deep level and understand your goals goals and help you um, and navigate them and, and do whatever you have set out to do um, here at U UW. Uh, we also um, have merit-based scholarships, and those are both uh, for incoming students and continuing students. Um, I'll talk about the continuing students uh, scholarships here, and then I'll talk more about merit-based scholarships when I talk about the admissions process um, in a little bit. Um, so we have a, a range of scholarships. They're all, again, outlined on our website for continuing students. And if that means that anyone who's a current student in the program can apply for those in our annual uh, scholarship application cycle, which usually opens every winter quarter. And they really range. They have different requirements. Some students um, have to, uh, this is some of the scholarships you have to be uh, going into your senior year, or you need to um, be going on a study abroad program and you're applying to tell us, uh, to, to tell us um, how you're gonna use that money to support your study abroad goals. So there's a wide variety of scholarship options for um, continuing students. Um, the last um, part of the um, benefits of honors that I just want to talk about is our intentional um, community building and community resources. Because in my mind, I think the other uh, students that you would be interacting with are the best part of the program. Um, again, honor students major in everything there is to major in across the UW. Um, they live in the residence halls, they live in the Greek system, they live at home, they commute, they live in apartments, they're in the marching band, they're in every club that you could possibly imagine. They study abroad, they come from all across the United States and the greater Seattle area and the world. And so there's a lot of variety there, but they're all interesting. And and they're all interested in learning and challenging themselves. And one of the things that I really like about our program is that it is not designed, nor do we encourage, nor do we find a lot of students really being um, cutthroat and competitive. It is designed to be collaborative and supportive. And because our students are majoring in everything, what we find is that they tend to really inspire each other. So it's like, wow, I am majoring in this, but Julie's majoring in that. And look, she's doing that really cool research project gosh, could I do that in my major? And you feel inspired by each other and um, you get to know people perhaps outside of the communities you might otherwise form um, in, in your majors and in your UW community. So we, um, we really love that aspect of our program. And I, it looks like I accidentally moved on. Um, I would say um, just a couple of quick things is that we do have a variety of events, um, social community, arts and culture events that we host and that our honors community ambassadors host. And those are students in the program who just want to put on events and be involved and help other students, honor students connect to each other. They have a lovely Instagram account, um, which is beautiful. And I believe, Julie, that you might be the one who runs that right now. So cool. Kudos. It's very awesome. Um, we um, also have an honors living learning community in the residence halls. And um, it's a really wonderful place for students to live. And um, it's not required if you're in the honors program. You can be an honors 
and live in the residence halls and not live in the honors LLC, you can. Uh, we find that usually it fluctuates a little bit, but usually about 50% of our incoming students do choose to live in the honors LLC. But again, it's a choice and you can live um, in whatever best suits your personal situation. So now, as you saw from me accidentally clicking through, um, we're going to talk about how to apply to honors. Um, I want to talk through the uh, application process. If there's um, admission specific questions, um, uh, we'll save that for the Q&A and for Jocelyn to answer because she is definitely the expert there. Um, so there's three options for admission to interdisciplinary honors. Um, again, there's freshman admission, which goes alongside admission to the UW. There's second year admission, which happens at the end of the winter quarter of your freshman year at the UW. And then there's transfer admission. So if you are transferring from another college or university, um, we're gonna focus our conversation today um, on freshman admission. Um, and we would encourage you if you're interested in second year transfer admission to reach out to us via the, the contact information we'll be providing. Um, and we can talk about those processes separately. Um, so who is eligible? Um, basically, anyone who applies to UW um, and is admitted to UW and also applies two honors via the application um, that is embedded in the UW Coalition application is considered. We have no GPA or test score cutoffs. We holistically consider every single application. Um, the honors application is a section within the UW Coalition application. Um, so we want to just call out for a moment the numbers from tw the 2020 incoming class. We had about 4,100 applicants. We offered admission to um, around uh, 1,100, and uh, we enrolled around 250. So um, what I would say is, you know, clearly it is competitive. But if you find a strong connection to our program values, don't let those statistics discourage you from applying. And we'll talk a little bit more about what we're looking for in an application as well. So uh, again, our the honors section is w embedded within the UW Coalition application. It's optional. And so you will see uh, a, a box that says, would you like to apply for admission to interdisciplinary honors? If you check that, um, you'll see uh, additional honors writing section, which is our part of the application. If you decide you don't want to apply um, after you've checked that box, you just uncheck it and that's it. Um, but if you do want to apply, you need to check that and fill out the two uh, writing prompts. Um, our writing prompts vary a little bit from year to year. Um, uh, and they are the heart of our application, but we do see the whole UW application. Um, so I want to be careful here and just clarify for everybody. Um, UW admissions does not look at the optional honor section. So if you fill that out, you will, they, they'll never look at it. They just tuck it away and obscure it. And no one, no one sees it when they're making your UW admissions decision. But we in honors, we see your entire UW application and we see the honor section and we do do a holistic review process, which means we look at all the components that you have provided. So we look at all the UW writing sections, we look at the activities you list, um, we look at your honors um, information as well um, and the honors writing section. So we just want to make sure that you're, you're very clear. Nothing you say in the honors section will be um, part of the UW evaluation process there. Um, our writing prompts um, tend to uh, be in sort of a similar theme from year to year. And um, generally, what we want to get at in the honors writing section of the application is, why do you want to do the UW honors program? Um, it might sound obvious, but it's really important to us that we um, understand from you as the applicant what you want to do in honors and why you want to do our program. And um, 
I, I'm really careful about this because I want to make sure that students are applying for the right reasons and that they're making an intentional, thoughtful choice to apply to our program. There's lots of honors programs in colleges at different universities and schools. Many of you may have had an honors experience in your high school experience, um, and we know that they all look a little different. So we're really looking in those essays and in those applications for students who are intentionally choosing our curriculum and our values and our mission and want to do those things. Again, it goes back to that reference I made to having you do the, um, go look at the honors courses page. So you make sure that those are courses you really actually want to take. So for this year, um, for the 2021 admissions, um, the honors essays are, what is your understanding of the UW Interdisciplinary Honors Program and why do you want to be a part of it? And then consider two very different subjects you've previously studied. Tell us how you imagine bringing those together at UW to engage with a pressing societal concern. This could be local, national, or global. So those are the things that we are looking at um, in the application. Um, when you apply, you have to apply by November 15th, just like UW, because our application, again, is embedded within the application when you submit, you submit them together. You will hear from the UW first. Um, they'll make their admission decision. If they admit you, the honors program um, then has to decide if we'll be offering you admission as well. And our um, decision notification period happens after the UW. So you'll hear from them first and then between mid-March and mid-April, you'll hear a decision from us. Um, I do like to note here that um, I believe still the admissions office sends out a actual physical letter in the mail. Honor sends out an email, so that's an important distinction. Um, we send out an email notification now, um, but we do make our decisions separately. This is where I'd like to talk quickly about incoming student scholarships. Um, you don't have to do anything separate in your application to be considered for our incoming student scholarships. Every single applicant who we consider, we consider you for admission, and if we want to admit you, we're also going to consider you for all of our incoming student scholarships. Those scholarships vary from year to year, and they vary in amount and in requirements. So we have some out of state, and we have some in state. They vary um, from very specific endowed um, scholarships where uh, we have one that you have to be from Spokane County um, in order for uh, to get that scholarship. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it's 4,000 a year spread out, or 4,000 spread out over the four years. Um, and we have uh, some, uh, some, a handful of four-year awards that cover tuition for in-state residents for four years. And we have some out-of-state awards that cover partial tuition for out-of-state students as well. So again, there's a wide variety. You, you can't do any extra essays or submit extra materials or you don't need to do anything else. We'll just consider you when you apply for honors for those. And if you are selected for any of those, it will be included in your original invitation to the honors program. Um, quickly, I just want to cover some common questions we have. Are all my classes going to be in honors? Nope. About a quarter of your classes at UW would be in honors. Do honor students have to take more classes? Again, the interdisciplinary honors requirements overlap with the UW general education, and most honor students do graduate in four years. Um, this question I like to answer because some um, honors programs do this. Um, do I get a spot reserved for me in any UW class because I'm in the honors program? And the answer is no. Uh, honors courses are reserved for honors students, but we don't reserve spots in all UW classes for you. Um, you register just like all other students do at UW, which is based on how many credits you have in any particular quarter, um, with seniors registering first down to incoming freshmen. And then the big question, will my GPA take a hit because of my honors classes? Or the other side of that is, will I be overloaded with work and not have fun and not have a life if I do honors at UW? <laughs> and the answer is no, probably not. Um, Julie can definitely speak more about her experience as an honor student, but what we generally hear from students is um, it's challenging, but their grades tend to be 
as good, if not better, in their honors classes than in their regular UW classes. Generally, they say, oh, I was super engaged and it was fun. And I, I really did all the, I did all the work and I did really well. And I like really wanted to be there and learn a lot. Um, that's not to say that it, it won't be hard, but that's also why we have advisors to help you pick an individual path through our curriculum. And um, we want to set you up for success. So we certainly want you to have a good time. We want you to have a social life. We want you to make friends. We want you to do all the extracurricular, non-class related things. And if you're ever experiencing a situation where your GPA is struggling or you're not having fun, that's why we have advisors who are here to talk to you and help you navigate those situations. So just as um, I wrap up my presentation, I have a couple of quotes that I will let you all read for yourself, just from students who um, have, were doing that a final portfolio class and getting ready to graduate. Um, this presentation is up on our website as well, so you can click through it yourself. But I think it's a really good way to think about um, you know, what you want to get out of your time in college. And one of the things that I really think is important is um, to make sure that you really like UW. So we love honors and we'll talk about honors, but you need to want to come to UW first. So before you apply to honors, you're applying to UW. You have to be admitted to the UW. So the University of Washington is amazing. And you need to think for yourself, would I be excited to go to the U University of Washington? Because honors is totally integrated into that experience. And we want you to be a happy Husky, um, as well as a happy honors Husky. And so with that, I'm going to end my formal presentation, which I took way too much time with. But now we'll um, have Jocelyn moderate some questions for us. Um, and Jocelyn, as you're preparing your questions, maybe, Julie, you could just tell us a little bit more about your experience as a student, some of the activities you're involved in, um, and some of the things you think uh, incoming or prospective students might want to know. Yeah, for sure. Um, hi again, everyone. I'm Julie. Um, I'm from San Francisco, so I'm an out-of-state student. Um, I'm a third year in the honors program, and again, I'm majoring in environmental studies and in the program in the environment. Um, some of the things that I've been involved in while in the honors program, as uh, Brooke said earlier, I'm an honors student leader. I'm also an HCA, which is an honors community ambassador, and I run the honors Instagram. So my phone has been like <laughs> blowing up because you guys have been following it, which is great. We'll continue to do that, but I had to put it off because it was going off a lot. But um, yeah, I run the honors Instagram. Um, I'm also the director of president of the um, Green Greeks program on campus, which is the RSO, a club um, at the UW. Um, I'm also um, involved in working at the UW farm, not currently, obviously, because I can't be there at the time, but um, I was volunteering at the UW farm for quite a while, which is an urban farm with three different locations on campus. Um, for my experiential learning activities, I did the UW farm volunteering and then running the honors Instagram has been my other experiential learning activity. I was going to be doing study abroad this summer, but unfortunately those were canceled because of the current pandemic. But um, some of my future goals to hopefully continue my pursuit to study abroad. Um, I'm taking a couple of honors courses right now. And yeah, that's what I continue to hope to do in the future. My last two years is stick to the honors program and hopefully get more involved. Um, I've been having a great time in honors. I love the classes. Um, I really didn't get too involved in honors until my second year. So um, really immersing myself in the community was very beneficial for me. And Hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions or like information you may want to know more about the honors program because um, definitely having a student perspective is really important. Yeah. Well, Julie, I think you kind of already answered it, but one of the questions um, from the audience was just about does, is your social life impacted? And I don't know, I heard a lot of activities that you're involved in. So uh, I don't know if you want to answer that, but it, to me, it seems like the answer is no, you're still able to be very social. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Um, I'm also in Greek life, so I'm in a sorority, so that did play a role. Um, my first two years, um, I was definitely exposed to a different social scene and being around so many people all the time. Um, and I think being in the honors program actually introduces you to so many different people from so many different backgrounds. Like Brooke mentioned earlier, um, you make friends from different areas, either in Seattle, beyond Seattle, and everyone has different interests as well. And I think the benefit of being in classes that are so much smaller, you actually have um, the time to make connections with your classmates because you're doing so much more discussions, you're interacting with your classmates all the time to do work and 
you're in a community that's a lot smaller. And I think that's actually a huge benefit. Going to UW, I didn't know anybody. I was out of state. It's a massive school. It's kind of intimidating, but being in the honors program, you're immediately surrounded um, by a smaller community, which actually really helped my social life. Um, that's how I made friends. Um, so no, I wasn't impacted neg negatively at all. Yeah. That's great. And actually, we have a little over 50% of those watching tonight are from out of state. So you're um, in good company. Um, Brooke, can we go back a little bit? There's um, a fair number of questions. And I know you addressed this, but I recognize we have people logging in, logging out. If a student has running start credits, so they're coming from Washington or AP credits, um, you, you explained that those credits may not necessarily go towards the honors program. However, um, how does that impact admission, their standing, um, admission to honors, I should say? Can you address that a little bit more? Yeah, so we love to see that the students are doing that. Um, uh, they're doing Running Start or, you know, bringing IB or AP classes or any of those those types of courses um, with them. We think it's really fabulous preparation. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I came from a really small rural school in Eastern Washington and I didn't have, there were no honors or AP or IB courses. So I went to Running Start and did that because that was the only way that I had to do anything more challenging and more advanced in, in my school. Um, what we will do in honors, if let's say you're bringing, you're going to get an AA from your Running Start experience, or you're going to bring so many AP and IB and college, and, you know, all these different combinations, because we see students who bring a lot of credits in, um, we'll sit down with you if we admit you, um, which we won't, uh, we won't make an admission decision based on that. We're not going to say like, oh, that person has too many credits, so we're not going to admit them. What we'll say is we're going to invite you in because you, you told us in your application that you're really interested in this program and you want to do it. And then we'll sit down with you and talk to you about um, how does honors and the 45 to 47 credits that we're going to have you do here, how does that fit into your goals here? If you want to graduate from UW in two years because you already have an AA, you might not actually have time to fit the honors requirements in. And so that's a very individual conversation based on an, a student's you know, goals, their major interests, their financial concerns. Um, and so um, you know, we absolutely look at those things as a positive, but we know that we ha we'll be having an, an individual conversation with students bringing lots of credits in about how they're gonna use those credits. And those credits may well go towards you know, prerequisites for your major or your general elective credits that you're going to need to do at UW. So they're definitely going to be useful um, and they're going to help you. It's just you, we need to talk about how they'll work with honors and your other goals at UW. Does that help? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, and you cover a lot of the questions that we're getting were covered, but again, I just will reiterate some of them as we know people are coming yeah. and going. Um, Really quickly, just want to remind everyone, the coalition is the one and only way to apply to the University of Washington. The profile, which is 80% of the general admission application, is always open year-round. So you can be working on that. And I know, based on our survey results, about 75% of you have already started that. So good job. Um, September 1st, next Tuesday, the remaining section of the application opens. And that's what Brooke was talking about. There's a little question that says, do you want to apply to honors? It's, but it's easy to miss because we get a lot of questions about it. You have to check yes. It expands the box, which then allows you to answer the additional honors essay prompts. And those prompts are online. So are the regular admission prompts. And through that process, you will then be considered for general admission to the University of Washington. That's what my office reviews for of those students that are identified who we want to admit to the university. Then honors will go ahead and review um, those who said they wanted to apply to honors. So just want to put that out there again, because I know we're, we're getting some questions. I'm um, also seeing a lot of questions around workload and um, seems like a lot of the audience is a little apprehensive about that. And um, is it harder than taking you know traditional regular University of Washington courses? And maybe Julie, you can speak um, to that from your perspective. Yeah, um, personally, I well, I came from a smaller high school, so, and I guess all high schools have a lot smaller classes compared to some of the 400 lectures that you have here at UW. You can have up to 500 people in a lecture, which is pretty overwhelming. But um, in terms of course load, um, I wouldn't say the honors makes it any difficult, more difficult than regular classes at UW. Um, 
Um, if anything, I found most of my honors classes to be easier than my regular classes at UW, just because I'm the type of learner that really enjoys having discussion-based classes that are smaller. Able to, I was able to make a better connection with my classmates and my professors. Um, and I was able to engage, I think, better in my classes because they were smaller and I liked that a lot. Um, and the course load, I think, is different in honors. It's not just, you know, assigning regular homework and or your finals doesn't determine your whole grade. Rather, um, you do a series of projects, you do different reflections because every course is structured differently. Um, so it does depend on the course. I can't say the same. I haven't taken honors chemistry, so I don't know how that, you know, is for a student compared to a different like honor social science course or something like that. But I think because you have um, a better connection with your professor, um, you're able to interact with your classmates a lot easier, forming groups. Um, I do think that the course load, if anything, was just easier than my other classes because um, I had people to study with. Um, if I had questions, I could just get up after class and go up to my professor. Um, and I didn't have to worry about, you know, kind of feeling a little bit alone, I think, in my classes. I took a huge lecture um, at the end of winter quarter last year. And that was really difficult for me just because um, I'm not the type of person to go to office hours a lot just because I'm a little more introverted and it is a little intimidating for me. But um, when you're sitting in a classroom with 20 other kids, and your professor's right in front of you and you're having a conversation face to face, um, it does take off the stress a lot more. So yeah, I think it was a lot, it benefited me as a student because I enjoy smaller classes. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize, um, add to what Julie just said in terms of the community and honors. Uh, you do see um, a lot of support between faculty, students, staff, and the alum as well. We have a, a nice um, alum base as well that uh, will come to campus and um, present to students, have a dialogue with students um, on alumni panels. So I think it's really um, it's nice to hear you say that, Julie, because that's what we hope. We hope that the community is caring and, and we, we strive for that caring, welcoming, and um, you know it's the head and the heart together, right? So, um, so it's good to hear you say that. Yeah. Couple other questions related to the admission and holistic review process, Brooke. And actually, I don't know the answer to this, but I'm curious. Do you um, look at major, first choice requested major, when you are going to holistically review your class? I know in the admissions office, we do. That is a factor. Uh, it's a small factor, but it is something to look at. Is it something that honors looks at as well? We don't, actually. Um, as as um, you or your office has, we've sort of been in a situation of like, hmm, should we? We, we don't know. Um, and, but at this time, we, we don't look at it. Um, we, um, we see it, but it's not a factor in our consideration. We just see like, oh, right, they put this. Um, and I would say from someone who does an advising, um, in my experience, most students change their minds about their majors multiple times. And so when we look at that, we tend to be like, okay, that's what they think they, they're gonna do, but we expect that it's quite likely that it will change. Yes, yes, that is true. <laughs> um, okay, we're, we're getting close to time, but there's a couple other questions I wanna make sure that we answer. Um, residency, so again, in the Office of Admissions, we have, um, set numbers that we can admit for Washington residents, U.S. non-residents, and international. Is that a factor in the honors review process? No, and I would say just keep in mind that we are only admitting people who ad admissions has admitted already, right? So you all are doing that level and that screening. So we don't consider it in our decisions. Um, and I can give you rough numbers from this last year, and they've been pretty consistent the last few years. Is it's roughly 64% of our incoming class is a uh, Washington State resident. Um, I think it's like 30. 5% is uh, U.S. non-resident, and then the rest is international. So our international student numbers are smaller than the UWs, um, but that's roughly how it breaks down. And the sticking on the theme, which is the theme of tonight, the application process and getting into the honors program, knowing that test scores are no longer required for admission to the university, where do you see the shift in and I guess I should say before I turn it over to you to answer that question, Brooke, um, from an admissions, general admissions perspective, whole, um, test scores have always been a very small part of that 
holistic review. So for us to remove it, it's not that big of a deal. It's not leaving that big of a gap. But in honors, would you say the same? Are you looking more at the grades, the curriculum, rigor, that sort of thing? Yeah, um, it's a great question. Um, and, you know, this is a changing landscape as UW has made its decision and we are, you know, following in line with, with UW. Um, but it goes in line with some work that we've been doing in the last couple of years where, you know, admissions uh, or sorry, test scores have been a small part of our consideration. Um, and and part of that is, you know, we, um, we want to make sure that, it, you know, we're being really equitable and thinking about test scores. And um, we, when we look at that holistic review process, we've look, we look at a lot of very small bits of information, but always return to those writing sections as the core components of what we're evaluating. Again, it's the, what, the, what the UW writing sections tell us about who you are and what you're choosing to tell us about your life, and then what your honors sec, uh, writing section tells us about why you're choosing this program. So um, I don't see um, the, the move towards not seeing test scores as being particularly impactful for honors. Um, uh, you, you know, it, it's a new challenge, it's a new world, but I, I don't think, it, I, I think it's similar to you, Jocelyn. That's great. Well, thank you to our panelists. We're at time. Um, this has been a great session. Um, I apologize. I feel like I might be a little glitchy right now if I am. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not. Um, but thank you. This is recorded. For those uh, questions we did not answer, we will follow up. We have your email addresses, and we will be getting answers to you as soon as we can. So again, thank you. Application open September 1st. Hope to see your application to the University of Washington and honors. Uh, in the next month or so. Thank Bye. you. Good luck, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye.